current state of the Helium network can be summarized by one specific hotspot, and that is the Nebra hotspot. Now, Nebra in and of itself, I don't think is a 100% scam. It was about 99.9%. .9%. The other percent, well, because people actually did get the hotspots, half of them actually worked, which is good. Um, and well, in the end, it just was an overall flop. And that's right now the current state of the Helium network. If we're being honest with ourselves, it wasn't a 100% scam, but in many ways, it's been a total flop because, well, it attempted to do what it was trying to do, but it's yet to achieve that. And the means that they uh, used really, the, the end didn't really justify the means uh, of the process that was utilized, talking about some of the, the partnerships, if you will, that were promoted very early on. So we're gonna talk about three things that can save the Helium network. And if these three things don't happen, then the network's dead. And so is the token and so are well the number of hotspots are already dead but the other ones uh, especially my 11 are currently online so with that said if you're new here my name is alex we talk about crypto crypto news crypto passive income if you enjoy content like this consider subscribing you enjoy the video smash up the like but without further ado let's jump in the video Right now, we see 50, just shy of 54% of overall hotspots are online. This is absolutely terrible. Um, this just goes to show you that even in a bear market, someone doesn't want to keep one of these ugly things plugged in, which obviously these don't work. But uh, a helium hotspot in general, people don't want to keep it plugged in for 13 cents a day. That's the average earnings of a helium hotspot. Now, mind you, there are some individuals that have uh, taken uh, the absolute whole nine yards approach to helium. And for example, this individual has earned on average earns on average about six dollars per day, which mind you, at that point, you know, one hundred and seventy dollars in the last month is really not too bad as far as just passive income. That's just off of uh, one hotspot. Obviously, not everyone's is going to earn that well or, or that much. It really just depends on location and in the height. There's a lot that goes into it, obviously, as we know. But this same value. Mind you, if we just round this up to 80, uh, a year ago, <laughs> this would have been about $4,000 uh, in a month versus 170. Mind you, we are in the middle of bear market. So for a lot of people that want to hodl, you know, this is an opportunity for them that they could perceive. But either way, $170 uh, a month really isn't bad for a few cents in electric costs. But for the time being, regardless of whether is it still worth it, and whether where the network is going to go in the future really just depends on whether it's worth just dumping and getting as much value as you can get out of the helium token right now or is it actually worth holding now the first thing that helium needs to do is really start pushing its grant program the problem is with something like helium and the helium network in and of itself there's not a lot of quote-unquote development or developers looking to build on helium now, obviously, this is a solution that's somewhat being solved because, well, Helium is moving to Solana. So there may be some benefits from that as far as overall growth. But the technology itself is something that I, from what I've heard, is a hindrance for a lot of people. If you look at a lot of the layer ones, which Helium is a layer one protocol, a lot of your layer ones, Kadena, Near, um, a lot of you, even Solana, you have a lot of projects and protocols and blockchains that have massive massive grant programs and the problem is a project like helium has never been one to really push and try to get people to build on the helium network it's just not as public or as like promoted as he as cadena if you look at cadena cadena has a hundred million dollar grant program now if you look at the overall uh price point of Cadena right now and the overall market cap, you can see that half of its market cap. Now, obviously, it's not the fully diluted market cap, but half of its current market cap, that's the amount of value that they have set aside directly for grants in order to incentivize developers to build on Cadena. Now, you don't really see that with Helium Network. And in my opinion, that is a huge problem. Um, if you look at Helium, 
Uh, specifically, they do have some stuff. It looks like they had shut it down at one point. Helium Foundation will reopen submission in fall of 2022. Um, you know, there are uh, certain things that I guess they're looking to do, but this is not something at the forefront of Helium. And if you're looking and if you're really focused on making this protocol work from the IoT side of things, it's it, it's a it's a level of risk. It's a level of cost for developers to build on something like Helium. And if you don't have a way to incentivize them via reward or a grant program that you're actively promoting, then it who who really wants to utilize something like that? So I think that's one of the biggest things when it comes to Helium is there needs to be more of a push towards the grant program if it still exists if they've even opened it back up um but it, it is something i think that is very much lacking in the overall ecosystem now secondly people need to get their facts straight but um bill ackman for some people that know bill ackman uh famous billionaire he has his own uh, venture capital firm recently uh as of a, a couple of weeks ago he promoted helium and what almost seemed like a sponsored Twitter thread post. This is what Bill had tweeted out. Mind you, this is November 20th. It's about three weeks ago. I don't know how many tweets this was, but this was absolutely massive thread talking about why <laughs> why he likes helium and his investment into uh, Dymo or, or Demo um, as far as a project that we've talked about that um, directly involves car data specifically so in this he talks about if you look at it up here um let's see here so given uh, as a result over time two-sided market for helium develops into miners buy hotspots deploy them around the globe to earn tokens users in turn purchase hnt in order to use the network the more demand for the network the more demand for hnt given hnt's ultimate finite supply the balance between supply and demand yields a market price which increases or decreases over time alongside the success of helium wi-fi network obviously first things first bill ackman doesn't realize that it's an iot network not a wi-fi network as such hnt becomes a valued commodity whose price is determined by supply demand uh demo i think i feel like the whole purpose behind him having this this twitter massive twitter thread was either one to show his own project demo uh, that he's invested into in order to talk about healing which a lot of people know to create some insight into demo because then he goes on and says demo collects valuable auto data from data ports and cars does so by allowing uh car owners to mint tokens by capturing data from their own car so he's pretty much saying hey uh helium for those of you who know what helium is you know the the success of the, their wi-fi <laughs> wi-fi network um hey something similar is happening happening at demo come check us out is what it kind of sounds like in many ways. Uh, I really don't know how much uh, Bill Ackman knows about Helium, specifically when he goes down here and says, um, where was it? That he talks about Helium's partnership. It might be up here where he talks about Helium's partnership with. Um, yeah, here it is. Un so initially, I assume there's no intrinsic value to any of the tokens and therefore no. They simply represent a modern day version of Tulip Mania without aesthetic benefits. But after examining a number of interesting crypto projects, I began to understand how a token could build intrinsic value over time. Two examples to help ex, uh, explicate my view. Helium created a global Wi-Fi network used by Lime Bike and other track devices globally, as well as other uses which benefit access to global Wi-Fi networks. Okay, so this entire Twitter thread was like absolutely ridiculously stupid because one, he keeps calling a Helium helium a Wi-Fi network, not an IoT network. Uh, and then secondly, he incorrectly uh, talks about the fact that, well, Helium is uh, and, and was <laughs> their Wi-Fi network, which doesn't exist. But I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that their IoT network was being used by Lime Scooters, which was also proven to be false. So the first thing first Helium needs to do is one push their grant program. Secondly, Helium needs to actually sign realistic partners, not ones that they tested their product for a couple of days or a couple of weeks and then they moved on because they didn't like it or they wanted to do something other than using the Helium network. They want to, They need to have legitimate partners that actually use the network and then promote their legitimate partners because the their promotion and utilization of Lime Scooters and that brand 
was completely fraudulent and completely deceptive. And in many ways, it was really only the reason that a lot of people got into Helium because they perceived this realistic partnership between a well-known brand such as Lime and Helium as a network. So first things first, Helium needs grant program. Secondly, they need legitimate partners. I realize they're dish partnership. Okay. In many ways, from what we've been told as well, is that was thrown way out of proportion within that specific partnership. Um, in this specifically, it talks about, a, I believe in this article up here, um, as far as, uh, okay, so in the Twitter thread, he said he likes Helium, uh, Wi-Fi Mesh Network, which, you know, specifically, they don't correct him on that. Um, and he says, using fraudulent endorsements from tech giants, Helium has been accused of these endorsements, uh, tech giants like Salesforce and Lime to give its network legitimacy, while also reportedly exaggerating its relationship with the Dish Network, which it claimed would grant it access to its 5G spectrum. So one, like we talked about, grants, secondly, have legitimate partners. You don't exaggerate the level of the partnership. You don't lie about who the partners are. You get legitimate partners because that's how you build a legitimate brand. And that's how you gain people's trust, not lose it. Now, post this, this kind of ties into the third part is start formulating partnerships of utilization of the current existing network. Because right now what Helium is trying to do is obviously the whole 5G thing that they're pushing is with the Saga phone. And, you know, they've already talked about this as far as, you know, Helium 5G and Solana integration and the, the Saga phone running on the, the Helium 5G network. The problem is you're not going to run something to that extent when you have so few 5G hotspots. If you look at 5G mobile, there's in the United States, this is worse than Sprint. <laughs> and so if you know Sprint's bad, you can only imagine how bad something like this would be. Obviously, we know that it's going to be alongside of an integration with T-Mobile. But I'm really interested to see, like, to what extent is this actually going to be any form of value to individuals that want to say, hey, I'm completely Web3 with Helium 5G, Solana Saga phone. Um, that to me, you know, you're not going to have this come to full fruition. If you lie about your partners, you don't have push for grants and you don't sign legitimate partnerships. Now, obviously, the whole situation with um, the Solana situation and the fallout of Solana after the FTX collapse has a lot of people kind of speculative as to is Helium still going to push forward with this. As we know thus far, Helium is still moving over to Solana. A lot of people seeing this as a positive. We talked about in mine and Vosk interview as far as, you know, there were some people that mentioned Hedera, Hashgraph. There was a level of a high level of interest for that, which never came to fruition. There's a lot better opportunities outside of Solana. But, you know, Helium moved to, moving to Solana is their own thing. In the end, if they do this, then they need to push for additional partnerships that see the value of both the 5G side of things alongside of the IoT side of things. Because quite honestly, the situation, and this is something we've talked about before, that currently exists is Helium's completely forgetting their entire IoT base. Uh, all their customers, all of their partners, all of their community, that if you look at the, the numbers speak for themselves, you look at the difference of 7,000 uh, mobile hotspots versus 978,000 IoT hotspots, 99% of the network right now is unhappy because 99% of the network is IoT. And if IoT is unhappy, that means 99% of the people involved in Helium are unhappy. And right now, it's only pushing to appeal for the 5G network users or individuals. And I'm not saying that you should keep from stop from pushing 5G and focusing on that. You have to, while you are building something else out, you have to remember who got you there in the first place. Something that something Vosk and I talked about is having an upgradable option for current IoT hotspot holders to then transition or transform their current hotspots into something compatible via an upgrade option to 5G. So outside of the Helium grants, outside of real partners and getting new partners, there needs to be some form to re-energize to uh, re-enlight the fire or rekindle the fire, if you will, under the current existing community. I think I can speak for the community in many ways that a lot of people see the value of 5G. People are excited about the value of 5G, 
but people aren't excited with what they have right now. And it's hard to try to convince someone to spend $2,000 if they have the fear that what they currently already have, they have an ROI on. And now they're being pushed to buy this new thing that they have the fear that, well, by the time they get it, they're not going to get an ROI on it either. So you have to appeal to the current community in order to push forward with what you want in the future. So I think if those three things don't happen, in many ways, the Helium Network is dead. There's no hope. There's no future. There's no potential. If Helium doesn't start pushing grants, pushing people to come and actually start adopting the network, if two, they stop lying about past partners or some potential future partners and exaggerating those and start signing official partnerships, the, the partnership I know with Constellation DAG is exciting. Uh, that was talked about through Constellation on their Twitter uh, space the other day. Um, you know, the, the partnership with Demo, that's exciting, but we need to have real, real partners, uh, not just random startups, not saying they're random, but these are startups. These aren't established massive brands. And we need to see those kind of partners. And then lastly, they can't forget their current community. They can't forget the 978,000 hotspots that got them to where they are today. And if they do, there goes the rest of the community. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think there's other things that should be included in if these three things, if you will, don't happen, that Helium Network is dead? Do you think it's already dead? Do you think it's too dead to um, <laughs> uh, reincarnate, if you will? Is, is there a way for Helium to ever come back? Obviously, everything is down right now. Everything is in the is in the dumps. But there will be some things that will be here in the next bull run, and there will be projects that won't be. Where do you think Helium will be on that spectrum? Comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, smash up the like. If you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. And until next time, guys, stay invested.